So, um, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining. Uh, my name is Evaristo Santamaria, as uh, you already said. Um, my talk is about SPH to predict failure and fragmentation for metals subjected to high stream rates loading. Um, I'm a first year PhD student for University of Hertfordshire, where um, Dr. De Voice is my supervisor. And I spend um, around half of uh, the time at ISL in France. So where Dr. Seidel is my supervisor. Um, ISL is a binational research center for uh, defense and security, uh, financed by both the ministries of defense of France and Germany. And uh, yes, we here basically we have uh, several research um, facilities for uh, testing several phenomena. Uh, in my particular case, um, high strain rates uh, impacts, um, high velocity impacts, uh, large deformation, uh, perforation, fracture, and fragmentation. Um, so the topic of my PhD is the investigation of impact-induced energy release for intermetallic reactive fragments. So intermetallic um, reactive materials are um, a category of material that uh, combines the good mechanical properties with the capability of releasing energy upon impact and um, after fracture and fragmentation. So basically what we want to do is to investigate um, the terminal ballistics of uh, small fragments made out of these materials using both experimental techniques and uh, combining them with uh, numerical uh, models. And of course, the, the way to, to go it's using SPH is the sensible, sensible choice, considering the, I would say, the flexibility of uh, the methodology. Um, among the objectives of the, of the PhD, there will be, of course, uh, the improvement of the constitutive model of the material, but uh, most importantly, uh, the improvement of the algorithm for the treatment of fracture in SPH. Um, among the experiment that I already performed and um, also some other of my colleagues performed here in, in uh, ISL are um, the Taylor test, um, high velocity impact test, uh, explosively driven ring test, and they all involve uh, relatively high velocities, um, fracture, fragmentation, as I already mentioned, all these kind of phenomena that are hard to model using a, a finite element method, for example. Another test that I would like to mention that uh, a colleague of mine performed is the blast um, impact of uh, um, 3D printed metal structures. Um, yes, so... As I mentioned, uh, we want to combine the results of the experiment with numerical modeling. Of course, uh, let's say historically, um, the finite element method, it's already been used to, to simulate this kind of phenomena, but with all the drawbacks that you probably already know. So the tedious and time consuming uh, meshing uh, part of the job, uh, the results will be, of course, uh, mesh sensitive. Then there is the tuning of the element erosion, and, uh, and more probably. Um, so that's why, again, we, we think that SPH is the, the best candidate to, to investigate such, such phenomena. Uh, to go a little bit more into the detail of my work, so one of the first tests that I performed is the Taylor test. Um, so uh, the idea is to, to shoot um, a rod of, uh, of some kind of material towards uh, a hard anvil, in our case it's tungsten, and um, in order to uh, derive dynamic properties of the material itself, um, by studying the final geometry of the, the specimen, using a simple formula, for example, you can obtain the dynamic yield strength of the material. Uh, so it's a very quick and cheap test. Um, Furthermore, combining it with high-speed high cameras, you can record the time history of the deformation. So you can, uh, comparing frame by frame, uh, measure the deformation of the impact surface and the shortening of the specimen. 
Um, so here on the on the right, you can see a first uh, SPH model that I made using LS Dyna at 73 meters per second. And um, so the results are um, quite encouraging, I would say. You can see on the left, the comparison between the, the experimental results recorded by the video and in blue, the, um, the results of the simulation. On the right, you have uh, the shortening of the, of the component and uh, the results are, um, the, the error is lower than 2%. Um, some other information that we got by this model, of course, is uh, the peak stress that it's uh, reasonable. So it's, uh, in, um, it's consistent with what is described by analytical models. And also the timing of the, the event. So in the experiment, we get 32 microseconds between impact and release, and in the, in the simulation, 34. So only two microseconds of difference. Um, of course, for our scope, um, it's interesting to study uh, fracture and fragmentation, uh, as our material is brittle. So um, using the same methodology, but in, in literature, it's uh, referred as overdriven Taylor test, we can obtain information on the fracture and fragmentation of the specimen and uh, use uh, these values um, as reference to, to then validate uh, the numerical model. Here, the experiment is performed at 93 meters per second. And um, the, model that I, the, the model that I've developed predicts quite good um, the shear cracking that you can see on the surface, on the lateral surface of the specimen. Uh, there is a good accordance in the number of fragments and the shape of the fragments. And uh, furthermore, in the, um, in the final uh, shape of the sample. Um, here, one thing that I want to highlight, it's uh, also we captured the asymmetry of the event. And this is made simply by inserting a, a small perturbation to the node distribution. So it's, it was very simple. This is, of course, a preliminary model, let's say a starting point to understand what we need to implement. But uh, I think it's quite uh, comforting. And um, yes. Um, OK, so um, another set of experiment that I performed are uh, ballistic experiments, so high velocity impacts. We shot very small uh, cylindrical fragments of the material towards uh, armor seal plates, thin armor seal plates, to velocities up to 1,500 meters per second. Um, of course, we cannot talk about hydrodynamics and uh, material behaving like a fluid. Um, we are more into, I would say, a gray area, but still we are, um, we are witnessing um, phenomena as uh, large deformation, uh, uh, fragmentation, and uh, failure with pl plug ejection. And uh, we already have performed some, some modeling also about this um, using LS Dyna. There are a few things that I would like to highlight in, uh, in this model that you will probably see better in the next stage. So uh, here you can notice that um, the, the discreti discretization is hybrid. So we, we, um, we defined uh, the particle distribution only in the part of the plate that is uh, affected by the impact, so that it's involved in the, in the impact process. Uh, the rest of the plate, of course, it's simulated using, um, it's, it's discretized using uh, solid elements, conventional solid elements. Furthermore, another very interesting thing uh, is that the particle distribution, um, it's uh, randomized. The, the algorithm for the particle distribution has been developed here at ISL by my colleague, which is uh, uh, Marvin Becker, and he also has my same supervisor, so Dr. DeVoist and Dr. Seidel. Um, this particle distribution allow us to obtain a very interesting result, as you can see. Um, so here you capture a, a symmetry in the, in the failure mode of the plate. And uh, this is due uh, exactly, I guess, to the particular particle distribution, because first of all, you're going to um, reduce further the 
mesh sensitivity uh, to, to the, the results um, mesh sensitivity, and you're, you're going to avoid any preferential direction for the stresses. Um, you witness this kind of uh, behavior also in reality, and you find it in the literature. Probably in the reality, this is due to uh, some defects present in the material or maybe an angle of impact by the projectile. This is not the case of the simulation, of course, because the fragment is hitting uh, normally the plate. So we could think that the, 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 this particular distribution will simulate the, the presence of some kind of, uh, of defect. On the left, you see shear plugging. On the right, you see fracturing. Um, you can see the result in a, a real life experiment also on the top top left picture, and uh, you you can measure other other parameters to validate the the model as the diameter of the holes or in the bottom of the slide uh, the shape of a metal um, metal fragment that has been deformed during the perforation. Um, so overall, I guess uh, those are very encouraging first results, um, and they give us an idea an idea on where to work to implement uh, the, the model. So to conclude, yes, um, I think that the main main things to to implement for us will be the algorithm for the treatment of failure and fragmentation in SPH. Uh, thank you.